Welcome back to My Smart Learning. Uh, this is a video for my year nines who are missing their lessons this week and it's about elastic potential energy. It's a science slash physics lesson, um, but it's useful not just for year nines, it's useful for year tens and elevens as well because it's ready for your GCSE exams. But year sevens can use it too to push them ahead because you've done energy in your year seven work as well. It's probably going to be a little bit more challenging, but uh, it's, it's, there's no harm in trying to push yourselves. So, elastic potential energy. Before we start, I know you keep guys keep going on about how bad my jokes are. So, just to compare, that my jokes aren't actually that bad. Well, that's from you know my opinion. Let's see if Alexa has a better joke than I do. Right. So, Alexa, tell us a joke. Okay, maybe not. I think Alexa's given up on jokes. Alexa, have you got any jokes today? Why was the computer so angry when he got out of his car? Because he had a hard drive. <sighs> and, and, and you say my jokes about right? Okay, anyhow. So, elastic potential energy. Uh, we're going to start off with a quick quiz. Recall high five. You get all five right. You get a virtual high five from me. We're looking at today's lesson is about elastic potential energy. Uh, what is it? What does it depend on? And how do I calculate it? Uh, we're going to do a quick recall quiz high five. Make sure you're using your revision guides. Uh, this is for my year nines anyway. And your uh, the bite size pages that I'll give you on your show my homework. And can you also please use the Caboodle textbook. If you haven't got your login details, just send me a message on show my homework and I'll show you how to do that. We're using, like last lesson, I forgot to mention this, on your kinetic energy. It's from page 12 and 13 in your textbook. Have a go at the questions in there. Get the key points down, get your notes down from there into your exercise books. So, uh, what is elastic potential energy? But before that, quick recall quiz, your high five quiz. What is the conservation of energy? Uh, question two, work done is, work done is, W equals, work done equals, what's the formula for that? Question four, GPE equals, and question five, KE equals, what does that equal? Right, so you're supposed to memorize these. So there's three ones you have to memorize now. There'll be a few more when we start off again in the next few weeks. Um, GPE then, so the answer then, question one, if you press pause and you make sure you got through all the questions. Uh, question one, conservation of energy is this. Energy cannot be created, nor can it be destroyed. It just changes from one form to another. Question two, work done is energy transferred. Energy transferred is work done. Question three, W equals FS. So work done equals force times distance moved. Remember distance, we use the letter S, weirdly. So W equals FS. Now remember our little rap or a little rhyme. GPE equals MGH. GPE equals MGH. GPE is mass times gravitation field strength times the height. KE equals half MV squared. KE equals half MV squared. KE equals half MV squared. Today's another one. So we've done one, two, three. We're on number four now. You can learn your fourth formula your fourth equation, and it's based on this practical. You've got a little clamp and stand, and you've got a spring. You add a weight to the spring. You have these slotted masses. The weight is the force pulling on the spring. The spring will get, will gain, elastic potential energy store. It will gain in its elastic potential energy store. The more you pull it, the greater the force, the greater the elastic potential energy store that in the spring. So, how do I calculate it? What is elastic potential energy? Elastic potential energy is the energy stored in a system when work is being done to change its shape. For example, in a spring or an elastic band. So when you stretch it, it gains elastic potential energy store. How do you calculate it? Another equation for you guys to learn. EPE equals half KE squared. EPE equals half KE squared. EP equals half KE squared, right? So half, 0 0.5. K E squared. What does it all stand for? Now we can write it as E P E, or you can write it as a capital E with a subscript. You put a little E down there in the bottom to show you it's the elastic energy. You could do the same thing for kinetic energy. You can have a little K there to represent kinetic energy. 
And you can have a little P there to, rec uh, to represent potential energy, as in gravitational potential energy. If you look in your revision guide and your uh, textbooks, you'll see that actually we don't write it as EPE, you write it as E to represent the energy, and you always use a little subscript, which means the letter goes sort of lower down and small, to represent the letter. So if it's EE, it's the EPE, elastic potential energy. If it's a little P, it's potential, like gravitational potential energy. It's a little K, it's the kinetic energy. So EPE stands for elastic potential energy. It's measured in joules, that's the unit, it's energy. K stands for spring constant. Now, if any of you guys done Hooke's Law, you'd learn what spring constant is. It basically tells you each spring has a unique spring constant. It tells you how much does this spring stretch depending on how much force I'm applying to it. So for every newton of force, how much does this spring stretch by? And you should get a line that goes straight up, like a straight line graph. And it's that gradient of that line because it's, it's a unique number for how springy or stretchy the spring is. Some springs are more stiff and it's harder to pull. Other springs are more loose and they're easy to pull. And that's basically what spring constant is. It's just a number that represents, is it easy to stretch or is it hard to stretch, depending on how thick the spring is, the, 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 the wire in the, in the spring is. So it's to do with its stiffness. So the spring constant is newtons per meter. So how many meters does it stretch per, per newton? And then the extension is how much has it stretched? And that's measured in meters. So again, a spring might only move a few centimeters, but you have to convert it into meters. So if it's stretched five centimeters, you'd have to do five divided by 100, it'd be 0 0.05 meters. So how do I calculate it? The EE or the EPE stands is half, 0 0.5, times the spring constant, whatever the number is, times by the extension squared. Now there's questions on this in your Caboodle textbook on page 12, so make sure you have a go at those. There's also some kinetic energy questions in there as well um, on page uh, 12 and 13 in your Caboodle textbook. So, simples. Right, so all you're going to do is memorise this uh, equation and uh, apply it to the questions. So, trickier questions though is when you'd have to rearrange that, just like the half mv squared. Usually it's just the EPE, you just do 0 0.5 times that, times that by itself, squared. If you have to work out the extension, it's a little harder. So if that's the same, if you times something by 0 0.5, it's the same as saying divide by 2. So I'd move my 2 up to there, so 2 lots of EPEs. And to work out the extension, I'd have to move my K underneath, so it'd be 2 EPEs divided by the K. And because you've got E squared, you'd have to square root the whole thing to get the answer. Okay, because you have to do the inverse. That's a bit tricky. That'll be your higher grade question. That'll be on your higher paper, maybe six plus grade seven type of question. If you're trying to work out the spring constant, what you'd have to do if that's divided by two, you move the two at the top, so it'd be two EPEs, and then you'd move the E squared underneath, so divided by E squared, and then that'll give you your um, spring constant. Unlikely to get that kind of question, but it could happen. That'd be more for your grade six question. So here's some exam questions. Uh, press pause on the video and have a go at these questions and I'll go through them now. So you need your calculators because these kind of questions are very difficult to do in your head. So Ellie stretched a steel spring by 0 0.21 meters. So this one's already converted for you. So you've got it in the right units, 0 0.21 meters. What is the EPE, the elastic potential energy, if the spring constant is 250 Newton newtons per meter. So EPE equals half KE squared. E, 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 yeah, and EPE equals half KE squared. So half, get your calculator, 0 0.5 times my K, which is here, 250 times, I'm going to open my bracket because I need to square that because it's E squared. So 0 0.21 squared, close the bracket, and then that will give me my answer of, I'll press the SD button, 5.51. Okay, so 5.51 joules. It's actually on my calculator, it says 5.5125. So I'll write the whole number down in my sheet. Always make sure in your exams, you write the equation out, the formula out first, substitute the numbers in, then write the answer, write the full number that's in the calculator, and must, must, must write down the units, nice energy, so it's in joules, and then write down how many significant figures you want. So you might say write it to two decimal places or write it as two sig figs. So two sig figs for this will be 5.5.
Okay, two significant figures. Now, question two then. Samantha bounced off her trampoline. What does the EPE in the springs, uh, if they stretch by 10 centimeters? The spring constant is a thousand newtons per meter. So there must be some stiff springs because you're jumping on it, you're going to be heavy, you're going to be jumping on this spring, so they'll need to take a lot of force. So, EPE equals half KE squared. So you write down EPE equals half KE squared. So half, 0 0.5 times by, I've got my um, K, which is there, 1000, times by, I'm going to open the bracket because I want to square this number. So it's my 10 centimeters. Now what do I do? Do I put the number 10 in there? No. Why don't I put number 10 in there? Because it's in centimeters. What did I say at the beginning? It can't be in centimeters. You need to convert it into meters. So 10 centimeters, you divide 10 by 100. That should be 0 0.1 meters. So it's 0 0.1 squared, close the bracket, equals 5. So the answer to that is 5 Joules. Okay, so that's straightforward. Next one. Ethan bungee jumped, uh, causing the rope to stretch by 20 meters. If the spring constant is 5 newtons per meter, what is the EPE? So EPE equals half Ke squared. EPE equals half Ke squared. So half, 0 0.5, times the spring constant, which is 5 times by the extension squared. So times by open bracket, 20 squared, close the bracket, equals a thousand. So he's gained a thousand joules of energy in that, in the elastic potential energy in that spring, you know, with the bungee rope, which is one kilojoule. Okay, so a thousand joules, one kilojoule. So that's straightforward, one, two, and three, straightforward questions. You plug it directly into the, uh, the numbers into the question. Here then, the harder question. This would be your higher paper. So these could be up to sort of grade five max. This one though, this bottom question here, that would be more of your grade six plus, maybe seven. Because you are trying to work out the stretch. Now remember the E, the E is squared. So if I want to work this out, I need to work out the E. If I want to work out the E, this times it by half, Okay, is the same as saying divided by 2. So then if that's divided by 2, then we move my 2 up to the top. So it's 2 lots of EPEs divided by the spring constant, okay, because I'm going to move this underneath. But it's going to give me E squared. The opposite of squared is square root. So the whole thing, I need to square root the entire thing. So I get my square root button out first. So in my calculator, I pressed in the square root. I'm going to have to do 2 times my EPE. So 2 times my EPE is 100. So 2, I'm going to first I'm going to open my bracket, 2 times 100, and I'm going to close my bracket because that's at the top of my fraction. So 2 times my KE, 2 times 100, which is 200 obviously. So I press the square root button, open bracket, 2 times 100, close bracket, and then I'm dividing it by my uh, k, which is that one there. So divided by 8. And therefore, that will give my answer. And into the calculator, gives me the answer of 5. So how much was it stretched? It's a massive catapult. It stretched it across this, this, this room that I'm in now. It's 5 meters long, which is probably about right if it's one of those big, massive treasure, you know, those huge, massive catapults. Um, so that's it. So that's how you'd work out the extension. So I did square root, open bracket, 2 times 100, close bracket, divided by 8, gives me an answer of 5, 5 what? Where's the stretch? That's how far has it gone? So that's 5 metres. So that's the end of that. That's a pretty simple, straightforward thing, but I've separated out. If you look in your Kabuto textbook, um, it's got the kinetic energy and the EPE as one lesson. But the reason why I split it into two separate lessons is because people get confused by doing two formulas on the same day. It makes it more trickier. So I split it up into two separate lessons just to make things more manageable. So hope you learned something today. You need to know your equations. Let's just quick go over your last few equations. We started off in the last few lessons. Work done equals 
force times distance, or W equals Fs. We learned that GPE equals MGH. GPE equals MGH. GPE, gravitational potential energy, equals mass times gravity times height. We've learned that KE equals half mv squared. Kinetic energy is half, or 0 0.5, times the mass times the velocity squared. And today we've learned that EPE, the elastic potential energy, is half times the spring constant times the extension squared. So you need to memorize those, you need to commit those to memory. If there's any issues with these last few lessons, you can send me a message, loads of you have been, so thank you for that, on Show My Homework or through the YouTube uh, channel. If this has been useful and you've learned something today, uh, please make sure you're watching all the videos, you're getting all your homework done, make sure you use the right pages on your computer textbook, make sure you watch, you like, you subscribe and share. And I'll see you next time. You look after yourselves and take care. And I'll see you on the next video. Thanks. Bye.